gratitude. Lord, I hope we can really kind of grasp this idea of forgiveness from you. Because every single one in this room is a sinner. Every single one of us room has made mistakes. We've missed the mark. And you are freely here in this place saying, I forgive you. And so, Lord, I truly pray that if there's something inside someone, man, they just want to get off their chest, they do that with you right now. Just the quiet of this place, in their heart, they don't need to tell me about it, they don't need to tell their friends about it, the leader about it, they just need to tell you about it. And so, Lord, we just bask in your thankfulness and just how amazing you are that no matter what we do, you, we come before you and we ask forgiveness and it's given. Lord, thank you for being a God that forgives. And we truly ask forgiveness tonight. It's hearing that we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can, uh, so, rhythm, or eighth grade doing it again tonight, so the rest of rhythm, fall, is about out. Have a great evening. Thank you, man. Not following last week, no way. Not that stupid. No, what? Okay. So we're going to do game first game, so, issue. Okay. All right, so are you guys setting Small groups? Okay, so we're gonna do a quick, whoo, I was gonna give 15 minutes, but I'm gonna give you 15 minutes. Here we go. As a group, and so uh, Ryan's group will go with, raise your hand and Ryan's group. Three guys, four you guys, okay. How many, you got two today? Okay, so you'll go with a group behind you, okay? Three, yeah, right. So you guys are a group. So this is called uh, Camera Phone Scavenger Hunt. There is a list of a bunch of things on here divided by point categories. You as a group have to take pictures of whatever this is, but what you do is you scan this QR code, because Olivia is amazing and we have technology. You scan the QR code and you'll go there and it'll be a file with your group leader's name on it and you dump your pictures in there. And over the next two weeks I'm going to go through and whoever has the most points uh, you guys get $50 to do whatever you want for your journey group night out. So that could be whatever you want to do with it, but you get $50 for your journey group night out by us, okay? So, for example, this is all one point each, right? Also, I will give extra points. You, the, you want your whole group in these pictures as much as possible, right? So the more the merrier. So, like, one point, take a picture of Jesus. Take a, pic take a picture with another group. Take a group hug selfie. Take a picture of everyone else taking a picture of you, stuff like that. 10 points, the big whopper, is group members have to spell a word with their body that has to be at least three letters or longer. Okay, so that's 10 points, the big one. But there's a five point category and a three point category. It is nine, it's 1925. It's 725, you guys have 10 minutes. You can go anywhere in the church except for this student room because rhythm's in there. So find some spaces, you might have to be creative with some of the stuff on how to find it. It's like, you know, take a picture with you and Mickey Mouse, take a picture with you and Thor, you gotta be creative. So, I need one person from your, oh, only one phone out. You can't be like doing multiple and dump them, okay? One person has the phone, they scan it, they dump them in the folder, okay? Any questions? All right, 10 minutes starts now. Come on, okay. the cool thing about Jesus, here, here's the thing, he could have. He could have entertained Herod, he could have made friends with Herod, and Herod can set him free. He had the power to do so. But you know what Jesus did? Man, this is my favorite Jesus moments. In front of this guy, this clown of a man, Jesus didn't say a word. King Herod, who has the power to set him free, who has the power to kill him, is saying all these things to him. He is royalty, and Jesus stands there and doesn't say a word. That's pretty cool. And so Herod's frustrated, right? Like, Herod's like, I don't see anything guilty with this guy, but send him on to Pilate. But Jesus had an opportunity to befriend Herod and to be set free, and he did it. The third happened here in John chapter 19, 9 through 12. Now, this is after Jesus had been beaten. Like, through, like, probably not even, if you watch The Passion of the Christ, it's an amazing movie, they do an incredible scene here. Uh, they, I mean, they show Jesus with his bones sticking out. I didn't want to show a picture because it's really gruesome. What Jesus went through was incredibly gruesome and incredibly painful, nearly to death. Scripture says he was beaten nearly to death because Pilate said, "Listen, I don't want to kill him. I don't want to kill him, but I'm going to have him flogged, and they're going to flog him near to death, and hopefully that will quench this crowd. Hopefully the crowd will stop saying crucify him. I don't want to deal with this. I want to be done with him." 
So here he stands again before Pilate. And Pilate doesn't want to crucify him. He does not want to kill Jesus. And so he pulls Jesus aside and he's basically saying, Jesus, talk to me. Say something. Give me something where I can set you free. In John chapter 19, 9 through 12, this is how it goes. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters and again asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. And this, is, this is Pilate trying. This is Pilate desperately trying to set Jesus free. He says, Why don't you talk to me, Pilate demanded. Don't you realize I have the power to release you or crucify you? Now, this is not important. This isn't a big deal unless you understand what the cross is. Unless you understand what is waiting for Jesus, death on the cross. The path of least resistance tells us, let's talk to Pilate. Say something, Jesus. Get out of this. What is ahead is probably the most painful way to die on this planet. Get out of this situation. He's given the opportunity. Pilate says, talk to me. I have the power to release you. This is Jesus' response. Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him. But the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares him king is a rebel against Caesar. So Pilate handed him over to be crucified. Three times Jesus had an opportunity to get out of this thing. Three times he had an opportunity to go with the path of least resistance. Why? Why? Because I guarantee you, if any one of us were looking down the barrel of what Jesus was looking down, we would have got out right away. We would take that first olive branch, we would use the power, we would take that olive branch from Herod, that olive branch from Pilate, and we would have said, you're right, the lies ahead is too much, I'm out of here. Because that's what we do as humans. So why in the world would Jesus, given the opportunity, not back out? This is where I need your help. I've got verses that we're going to go through together because this explains why. So someone from over here... Grab a Bible in your pew and look up Romans 3.23. Hey, do you got it? Romans 3.23, okay? Someone from the middle section here, look up Romans 6.23. Who's got it? Just raise your hand. Thank you. Romans 6.23. Over here, John 3.16. Who's got it? Jesse. Jesse's got it. John 3.16. And then in the back... 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. If you want to use your phone for an app, that's fine. You can Google it. 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay? Because the, the question that we want to ask, or answer, is why? Why in the world would he do this? Okay? So let's, so let's follow this, because this is, this is why. Okay? So, and you read it nice and loud for us. Romans 3. We're all sinners. The cost of that sin is death. 
But how about John 3.16, nice and loud? For God told the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal Okay, so there's some hope. We're all sinners. Sin's a big problem because it's eternal death. But Jesus came so if we believe in him, we can have eternal life, not eternal death. So what's the missing piece here in the back, Second Peter? Yeah, okay. So if you didn't hear that, one more time, as loud as you can, that's a killer. Go ahead and stand up. Stand up for us. Shout it to the rooftops. Okay, everyone listen nice and loud. Okay. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that three from sins we might live for righteousness by his wounds have been healed. Thank you. So here's the problem. We're all sinners. Why is that a problem? Because the cost of that is death. Well, there's hope in Jesus, right? In Jesus, we can have eternal life. But how does that solve the sin problem? Because when he dies, he took on our sin. When Jesus died upon the cross, he paid that price, that price of death for our sin. We have a sin problem. All of us. Sin equals death. There's hope in Jesus. Why? Because his death pays the price for our sin. And that's it. There is nothing else that can pay the price for the sin. That's the sinners that we are. There's nothing. So the question was, why in the world? And the answer is us. The answer is us. And this blows my mind. I've been a, I've been a follower of Jesus since I was your age. In seventh grade confirmation, I can take you to the church. I can point out the pew where I sat, where I decided I'm, I'm in because this Jesus guy, I mean, I think I'm pretty great because that's my wife. This Jesus guy looked at me, a flawed, sinful human who's going to make big time mistakes and hurt people and do stupid things. And even because of all that, he still died for me. He still chose that horrible path for me. That's changed my life. Because of God's love for us. That's why. It's an incredible story that I heard. Go ahead and go to the next screen. There's an amazing story of this eight-year-old boy who had a, a sister who was about two years younger. And this, the sister, who was about six or five years old, was dying of leukemia. And she needed a blood, a blood transfer. And uh, they, they said, well, I bet you the brother might be the same blood type. So they tested the eight-year-old brother, and sure enough, he was. And they went to the brother and said, listen, would you be willing to give some of your blood to your sister? It could really save her life. And in a typical eight-year-old mind, he said, I have to think about it. And so he slept on it. And the next morning, he went to his mom and dad and said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give my blood for my sister. And so she goes, they, go, they both go to the hospital, they both get on the, the gowns, they're both lying on the gurneys. And the doctor comes over and takes a pint of blood from the eight-year-old boy. And then he watches as he takes the, pint, the bag of blood that was just taken out of his body and is brought over to his sister's bedside and put on the hook and the blood starts flowing in into his sister. And the doctor comes back over to check on the boy and the boy reaches up and grabs the doctor's shirt and asks a question. He says, how long before I die? You see, in his eight-year-old mind, he thought by giving up his blood, that meant that he was going to die. That meant to that eight-year-old boy, he was willing to give his life for his sister. It's called sacrificial love. And that's what God did for us on the cross with Jesus. He gave up his son to save our lives. And the amazing part about this story is Easter Sunday, his resurrection. Because see, what, he, what makes Jesus the Messiah is the resurrection. Jesus prophesied about how he would rise again. Old Testament prophecies about how the Messiah would come and die and rise again. And if he did not rise, he would have been another prophet. But he rose. He conquered death and proved that he was the Son of God and prove that he was the Messiah, and prove God's love for you. That all happens in the resurrection. That's what we celebrate 
Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Because it's proof of God's love for you. But Jesus' walk to the cross was not easy. It was extremely painful. But yet, he chose because of love. Because of love. That's the walk to the cross of the cross of the Christ. Go to the other time or whatever. Get it? That's a walk of Christ on the cross. It's a, a painful walk, but every step of it is extremely meaningful and important because it's just littered with ways that God loves you. So my last question for the night is this. Go to the, go to the next slide.